Hello, my name is Rolando Isla. I am a guru in Caledillion methodology and the founder and chief instructor of Isla Mandarin Makali, its school here in the Philippines. Today, I want to talk about um, going to the Philippines and studying Filipino martial arts. For many people, the first place that they think about going to would be Cebu. And quite honestly, because of the history of Filipino martial arts, its probable origins, the cultural and linguistic background of many of its founders, Cebu is probably a really good place to start. In many ways, it probably is the heartland of Filipino martial arts. An argument can be made, and it's a strong argument, um, that what we call the Filipino martial arts should actually be called the Visayan uh, martial arts. This was made by uh, Dr. Ned Nepange and Celestino Makachur in their book, Cebuano uh, Escrima, Beyond the Myth. In my opinion, that is the finest book, the best research book ever written about the Filipino martial arts and, and its history. Um, if you're serious about learning about the history of Filipino martial arts, that's definitely a book that should be on your reading list or in your book collection. Today, however, I want to talk about the Manila scene, Filipino martial arts here in the Philippines. For certain systems, like Calis Ilustrisimo, Lightning Scientific Arnis, Tikiti Tercia Cali, Modern Arnis, I don't think Manila has to take a back seat to anywhere in the world, anywhere in the Philippines or anywhere in the world for that matter. If you want to get the best instruction in those systems, you come here. Before beginning, I, sh I want to talk about a um, misconception that a lot of people have about our arts here in the Philippines. In the late 90s, a lot of people thought that Arnis Cali Escrima was a dying art in its own uh, homeland. I don't think that was the case then. I know it's not the case now. These are martial arts that are led by committed, passionate people who want to see it uh, continued, promoted, and spread throughout the world. Um, I think it was a narrative that was... I don't think that there was any malice involved. I just don't think that they spent enough time in the Philippines to understand the nature of martial arts here, how difficult it is to find sometimes. And um, I, I, I think that it's a bit different today because of social media, because we have a younger set of instructors who are more attuned to um, promoting Filipino martial arts to a worldwide audience. So it, it's that idea that it's a dying art, that it doesn't exist in the Philippines, nobody believes it anymore. It's a very, um, any martial art is a niche art. It just is. That rule doesn't just apply here in the Philippines, it applies to anywhere in the world. Like most countries in the world, our most popular art probably is Taekwondo or something like that. But we still have a very large, dedicated following in Filipino martial arts. And it's a committed following. It's very passionate. It wouldn't give up the art for anything. And quite, and quite honestly, it's um, something that will, uh, that will continue to grow. What I wanted to talk about today are some of the young, great instructors that we have here in Metro Manila. And there are so many of them that I want to recommend. And I know that I'm going to miss a few, and I apologize to them. I guess the first instructor that I should mention is my own senior instructor, Kuya Toby Hinato. Of uh, his system, or rather his uh, group, is called Calis Tres Armas. And uh, Toby is a very dedicated, innovative, creative instructor. In many ways, he is much more talented and hardworking than I ever was and I ever will be. He's much more like my instructor than I am. Um, he's very exacting in terms of what he wants from his students. And that's why his students all get to be very, very good. If you want to study Cala de Leon here in the Philippines, I recommend Mr. Uh, rather Kuya, uh, Toby Hinato. The other systems that I want to talk about, I mentioned them earlier, Cala Silestrisimo. Lightning Scientific Arnis, uh, Piquiti Tercia Cali and Modern Arnis. 
have teachers that are Visayan, but they moved here to Manila to make a better life for themselves. And because of that, most of their senior instructors, their very best instructors, continue to reside here. Uh, let's talk about Caldas Illustrisimo first. If you want to study a um, system that's, I, I don't know if strict or pure is the right term for it, but it's a system that you can see directly um, linked to uh, Master Tony Diego and uh, its founder, uh, Antonio Illustrisimo. You should probably look up somebody like Arnold Narso or Mampichi. You can usually find uh, Master Arnold in, in Luneta on the weekends. Um, an older instructor, a uh, direct student of uh, Tatang Illustrisimo would be Mang uh, Rumi Makapagal. He still continues to teach. Um, excellent teacher, understands. He is an original source of Filipino martial arts. If there's anything, and Kalis Illustrisimo, he would be the person to talk to if, if you want a direct link to uh, Master Antonio Illustrisimo. There are a couple of offshoots of, of uh, Calis Illustrisimo that I'd also like to mention because I think that her instructors are absolutely sensational. The first system that I'd like to talk about is Rapido Realismo and its founder, Master Henry Espera and his senior student, Master Isagani Abba. It's an eclectic system. It combines Illustrisimo with other systems, um, as well as their own ideas and concepts about what martial arts and self-defense should be here in the Philippines. It's very much a progressive system. Every, basically they want to test everything. The, their idea of self-defense is very much street-oriented for here in the Philippines. And it's something that is um, founded upon reality-based ideas about how an individual should realistically defend himself on our streets. Uh, it, it is a system that has, that's, that's comprehensive. It has double stick, single stick, spade daga, and by stick I also mean sword. Uh, knife, double knife, empty hands. And um, it's taught in a very progressive way. Uh, Izagani Abon, his senior student, is a very young instructor who who's uh, done a lot of research and continues to be a student of the art, who is, who is con constantly learning and constantly works to improve his art and passes that along to his own students. Another instructor who I want to mention is Bong Abenir of Abenir Callis, another very serious student of the martial arts. His system is also eclectic that combines uh, illustrisimo, Silat, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, Muay Thai, Yao Yan. And he does so in a seamless way. He is a believer in live training, in testing everything to make sure that it works. Um, he's a, I, how shall I put this? He's a very stern taskmaster. It's a, it's a system that has very dedicated, committed students who do a lot of sparring. They're excellent in what they do. And um, like Rapido really small, they're a system that believes in testing everything to make sure that it works, that ev everything that they teach can be applied in a realistic matter, manner on the street. Another young instructor that, that I want to recommend would be Ronnie Roy Sabase. He has his own system called Larao Martial Arts. And uh, his uh, own background is uh, Yao Yan and Mangus. His own system has gone beyond that to include uh, grappling, uh, a very creative use of improvised weapons, uh, his own system, uh, his own interpretation of uh, Filipino empty hands or panuntukan. Panuntukan is, is kind of a controversial term that really didn't exist, that really didn't exist here in the Philippines prior to about 2000. It's become more popular recently. And quite honestly, it's become popular because of the work of young students like, like Izigani Abon and, and Rani Royce Base, who's put together their own effective systems that incorporate stick work and empty hands in a seamless way 
and um, it's their own version of a Filipino empty hands, Filipino box. Um, I recommend him highly. If you want to talk about a lightning scientific arnis, I guess I should probably start with a couple of excellent young teachers, uh, Master Botocano and uh, Master Nathan Dominguez. They were part of a group that was uh, university taught and university, uh, they are from the University of the Philippines, Les Cas Lightning Scientific Arnis Martial Arts Group. They're, by university taught, I don't just mean that they were taught at university. What I mean to say is that they are professional educators. They have a background in pedagogy, as well as a background in sports science, human kinetics. They understand how the body works, they understand how the body moves, they understand about strength building, about power generation, and they understand about how to teach all these to their students. Their system of uh, lightning scientific arnis is, is uh, very much the system that was taught by Master Ben Lima, as well as his uh, senior student. And um, I would recommend them highly. There's a lot of older instructors in a lightning scientific arnis like Master Phil Buena, who's also, who also lives, here in the uh, also lives here in Metro Manila and has a lot of excellent students who I can recommend highly. For uh, Piquiti Tercia Kelly, um, I guess the highest ranked instructor under uh, Leo Gahi would be uh, Master Ramel Tertal. And many of his seniors, their senior students, like Master Mickey Alcaraz and Master Diva Taklan, reside here in the Philippines. They have many schools throughout the Metro Manila area and continue to teach a very effective, tactical approach to Filipino martial arts that they've spread to uh, not just the civilian population, but also to our, to our police and to our military. Uh, modern armies. I would probably start with somebody like Master uh, Rodel de Goo. Even though he lives in Bawan, Batangas, I'd mentioned him in an earlier video, he still comes to Manila to teach on the weekends, and he has a great many young instructors like Master Bon Barameo, who continue to teach his art. Somebody else would be Alan Fami. And uh, these are uh, the disciples of the Presas brothers, uh, Remy and Ernesto. And uh, they have a great many schools here in Metro Manila who teach a very effective, no-nonsense type of Filipino martial art. And they do it in a very systematic way. Many of our FMA systems originated, not FMA systems, FMA groups, originated in our universities. They're taught by young people who aren't only passionate about the art, but know how to teach it. I, one example that I want to give would be the Kamal Martial Arts Group, K-A-M-A-O Martial Arts Group. This started at, um, originated out of Ateneo de Manila University. And it would include uh, somebody like Raymond Suba, as well as the Gayalago brothers. I mention them because they tend to make up the coaching staff of our national Arnis teams that compete in the Southeast Asian Games. Like the uh, UP, University of the Philippines, LSI group, these guys are from um, a university-based group that understand about sports science, that understand about movement and strength building and pedagogy. They know how to teach. The other thing about them is that they're the coaches of our national teams. They test everything in, in the crucible of competition. I know a lot of people put down sports as being unrealistic. I think that's the wrong approach. Sports is a means, like, any, of, like anything else, of, of, about testing what you know, what works, what doesn't work. It's not the be all and end all of testing uh, applications for martial arts, but it's definitely a great um, non-cooperative means that's more difficult than most uh, systems do. You're going up against, you're, they teach you how to be a top flight athlete, going up against other top flight athletes who are faster, stronger, and probably better trained than most people that you'll ever run into on the street. Having said that, They've gone beyond the typical sports training that, that we do here in the Philippines. And by sports training, I mean RP, Arnis Philippines, or WECA, uh, World Eskrima Kali Arnis Federation style fighting. They've gone beyond the live stick um, sparring or the padded stick sparring. They've also done minimal armor 
practically no holds barred full contact combat uh, matches. I know this because my school is one of the first to accept an invitation from them to uh, participate in that match. And all I can say is they, they were nothing but a group of fine gentlemen who treated my students wonderfully. And we found that we were able to learn from each other and we thanked them for that experience. We were the only group that chose to participate that chose to accept their invitation the first two times that they've done it. And it was because of their work that that Dog Brothers style competition or Dog Brothers style format became popular here in the Philippines. I'm not saying it doesn't happen elsewhere in the Philippines. I'm just saying that this is the first group that's really popularized it. That's made the concept open invitation and we should be thankful to them for the work that they've done. Before ending this video, I really want to um, reiterate and pay homage to the um, Visayan roots of Filipino martial arts. Masters like uh, Master Ben Lima, Antonio Listrisimo, Leo Gahi, both Ernesto and Remy Prasas, they all have Visayan roots from Negros, from Panay, from Bacolod, from uh, Cebu. They chose to live here in Manila because of economic opportunities. They spread the art from Manila to the rest of the world. And uh, we should acknowledge that and um, pay tribute to the work that they've done and the origins that our arts came from. It, you know, uh, Nepanga and Makachur, like I said, made a very powerful argument that the Filipino martial arts might as well be called the Visayan martial arts. Um, and it's a strong argument. It's very difficult to argue against. To argue against. Um, if you want to study Filipino martial arts here in the Philippines, here in Metro Manila, I'm going to make future videos about martial arts tourism as well as FMA history. Um, as as well as other things. If there's anything you, you'd like to see me talk about on video, please leave a comment in the uh, comment section. If you like my video, please subscribe and like. I look forward to talking to you again in the near future. Have a great day.